Hi, puppy. Are you helping mommy? You have your baby? Hi, Rich. Well, we finally tackled the turning lock to the right. This is the gold turning lock, or the overturned turning lock, the one that we're taking from the spin turn with a full turn. This is another example of putting the, the feet and the body in the right position, and the correct alignment can do a great deal for success. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually we're not in the right position. We don't understand the relationship of the man and the lady, so we end up with a big problem. So we're going to be very disciplined about the alignment. And then we're also going to do the exercise that I was having you do, where you just rotate, once again realizing that the feet, that there is turned in the feet, that is through the feet, through the bones of the feet, and not through foot swivel. And we do this quite a lot. So you must have your base loose and free for rotating, but we also need to be aware of the top. So we'll come back to that exercise after we go through the foot positions. The reason I'm making a, a point of that is once you got your foot positions correct, I still could see a bit of a bump between the lock itself and into the promenade position. That was because you were carefully placing your feet, but you didn't have the upper body also working to take your partner around you. And in, in this case then, moving the partner past you really helps to facilitate the movement. So what things are different? Well, for one thing, the more that you turn your spin turn, the more the third step moves to the side. We've talked about that before on an underturned spin turn where it's more back and slightly side. And then the normal spin turn, which is an eighth less than a full turn, side and slightly back. And then the full turn where it's to the side. So you have finished your spin turn. And as we're preparing to go into the lock, once again, this standing leg is very important, just like we talked about on the, the turning lock, the silver turning lock. So I must have the feeling of dancing forward as I prepare to move back. So my right leg is informed, once again, my free leg, it's informed through my standing leg, and my lady is also informed from her standing leg. So that's down the line of dance, preparing the turn, and that is why I have that shoulder leading or that preparation for the lock. So that's where I was telling you to have, have a feeling as though your toe is just very slightly turned out. It's down the line of dance, but there's a preparation for turn. So it's not directly straight back with no indication. So you have that shoulder lead. By the time that you loosely cross your leg across the front, you need to be to center. Now this is what was not happening when you were practicing on your own. And that is, that is both my body and my foot. So we don't have a pointing alignment here. That means everything is matching up. The loose cross I think is important because it should give us a sense that we should have this anyway on any lock of our standing leg and our movement across the feet, causing this leg to cross rather than stepping it out. And that's another problem where sometimes partners are kicking each other, is many times a gentleman who's now on the inside of the turn will step like this, instead of allowing the movement to create the cross, and it becomes very bumpy and a little bit dangerous. So be aware of that, that you're moving in the turning lock. It has to me more of a movement of sideways sensation than turning. We are turning, of course. We're going to make three eighths of a turn as we finish. And this is another example of where there's an eighth of a turn right before the last step. So here we have a syncopation. One and two, three, instead of just one, two, three, where there might be an eighth of a turn between two and three. This will be between the and and the two. So we're using our standing leg, we're creating our movement to invite the lady into the lock. By the time we get to step two, our alignment is center. 
And then as you take the last step, slide and slightly forward between her feet, you've accomplished an eighth of a turn. It doesn't take any effort because the swing has taken you there. I'm going to place my lady ahead of me, put my foot between her feet, and just as would happen in the impetus turn, I'll move diagonally forward with my left foot, having allowed my body to continue towards the lady. I'm going to talk about her part in a moment because just like in the impetus turn, she has much more turn than you do and lands in a different position with her feet. So she has to have the sensation from the man less about turning and more about continuing to move that way. And eventually she'll come out, also DC, but she does not rotate like a hinge. She has to be placed ahead of you, just like in the impetus turn. And continue for your spine to move forward. And that's the idea of two directions, a direction for the girl and a direction for myself. Not just a direction for myself, trapping her here. I also have to always stay with her. So when we do this little exercise, again, I'll talk about that a little bit more. So that's a quarter and an eighth, again, through your feet. You have that diagonal movement, you accomplish center, and you place the foot DC. It's very important this is not a big step and too far forward because your lady is coming right through this curved path. And here you want to attack her center. And she'll end up running backwards towards diagonal center instead of coming around you where she needs to be. So a couple of different exercises that we did. One was so that you, you realize while your feet are not swiveling in the room, there is turn in your feet, in the ankles, leg bones. But you also need to be aware from elbow to elbow of sweeping that lady past you into the turning walk. And then we tried doing it all together, but it needs a little bit of practice because you are still getting a bit of a, a thrust here on the last step. We don't want that feeling, we want a feeling of dancing the bar of music, dancing the swing. So actually, as I'm catching my girl here at the end of the spin turn, I'm going to use that use that swing and use that curve to continue the lock. So think of it starting from here and ending over there and not suddenly appearing here. There's so many things to talk about on this lock and we did talk also about the rise. So this one goes again from the basement to the second floor. Right, so what we're doing is we're we're catching this weight, catching this ball, catching the energy here, going to the basement, and then up to the second floor. So again, we can have a problem if we dance this too low, or if we achieve all the height there. So once again, your highest point will be two, as you take that last step into the lock. One and two, three. Two and three will be up. So it's a gradual rise. You always have a gradual rise on your lock, just as you have a gradual rise on your chasse. The other thing we practiced then was just going from the and, which is the loose cross, to the two. So if you're in that position, what I wanted you to feel was the use again of the standing leg to place you onto your two. And then the shape, watch the shape of my leg as I continue into count three. So this leg easily can become useless, dead, and also forget to shape at the end. So I'm using it here to help to create and to continue to feed the base for my lady, but I'm not done yet. So as my my body has to continue, so I think about, you know, in the impetus turn, we talked about the fact that you're coming out on three, 
between two and three to go DC, but your spine is to the line of dance. So this keeps the lady moving into her promenade easily. So I have to shake that leg that's behind me. Now, if I was in an impetus turn, I would be coming from a heel turn. In this case, because I'm coming from an open position, I need to allow that spiral to continue down my body and be reflected in the back leg. There's a rotation through my hips and legs all the way down to the floor. I cannot do it like this. And we see this quite often. We see really ugly positions for the men in their legs. I don't have much room here, but going into this promenade with the legs turned out. It's a funny feeling at first, but it will really free up also your standing leg and your standing hip to work easily. So what about the lady? So I'm going to draw attention again to the different foot position for the lady and the man on step three. And that shows us that we have different action and that the man has to, in his mind, be aware of what he's doing with the lady. Because so many times the men just do their part, they imagine if they think about the girl at all that she's doing just the natural opposite. And in these promenades, then I tend to either keep her held too tight or to turn her like a door instead of the full feeling that we want to have from the lady. So she is also loading up her three of spin turn as she lands. She feels the use of your standing leg and her standing leg so that she can move into the lock. She's on the outside of the turn, so I am thinking of moving her in advance. She will be backing center, just as you'll be facing center as your legs cross. So she cushions and she moves into this position. Then she has to move her foot and allow you that space, and her alignment is now also an eighth of a turn back in diagonal center. Now here's where we usually get into trouble, is the man has too tight a grip on the girl, doesn't understand that this is her third position, and he ends up twisting her here. So that's why I need to have this feeling of continuing my spine and my arms in that direction even as we're going there. So I want that girl to peel off and she ends, her foot is center. So her movement is DC. Her alignment is not DC. This makes a big difference on how well we have our shape and promenade position. You have this diagonally forward step with your left side leading. In her moving backwards, she ends up sideways pointing center and moving diagonal center. So her movement here has become sideways across her feet. I think it's really important to understand that so that we don't produce this kind of a, a feeling. And then often the correction is, well, she's too open. Or to the man, you know, that you've, you've twisted her, you've uh, pulled on her, and it's, most of it has to do with the direction of your spine and not giving enough space in this hand. But the lady, if she is, if she's led in a way where you produce this, this kind of a twist in her, she, there's nothing she can do about being too open. It, it's going to happen. She cannot control it. The other thing that's interesting is sometimes when the lady finally does it correctly, both by understanding it and by having her partner understand it, is she may say, well, that can't be right. It's too open. Because where it's open is here. But you see, then I have a good promenade position. I do not have this. But it's such a different feeling when you do it correctly. And we really notice it as we take the next step through in that the lady is not blocking the man. Typically, the step through and promenade will find out the lady is walking the man, often by where the man placed the lady. 
but it's reciprocal. You know, she's not going to do what she's supposed to do if she doesn't understand how to move. And if you do it incorrectly and create a problem for her, she can't either. So it's definitely, we both have to understand our parts. But I wanted to draw that correlation between the, the open impetus turn and the end of the turning walk. Even though you're dancing a heel turn and then you're dancing right between her feet on the uh, turning walk to the right, the dynamics are the same here. So that's a really interesting point to take note of. So gradual rise, get your alignments correct. Be aware of the difference in your part and your partner's part. Now there's more we could talk about because there, there are shapes that we can put on the turning lock. We can shape it different ways, different preferences. But we're not going to go there just yet. Okay, we're going to focus on getting the fundamentals down. All right, good. So work on that, and then I'll see you on Friday.